Welcome to this Tutor to You Sociology topic video. In this video, we're going to be looking at sexual orientation and gender identity as part of our series on the topic summaries released for Census 2021. The findings of Census 2021 are being released in regular topic summaries, starting with the first topic summaries which released in November 2022. In January of 2023, the Office for National Statistics released the data on sexual orientation and gender identity from the census conducted in 2021. This was the first time in the history of the census that questions on an individual's sexual orientation and their gender identity had appeared on the census. And this gives us our best insight into the way that individuals define both their sexual orientation and what gender they identify with. However, the findings are not without their limitations, as we will see throughout this video. Firstly, sexual orientation. This was an optional question that was asked to those over the age of 16, the legal age of consent. The question that was posed to respondents was, which of the following best describes your sexual orientation? And a series of options and the ability to write in a sexual orientation were presented. 92.5% of the population answered this question, which, whilst it's a good response rate, doesn't account for the reasons why people may have chosen not to identify their sexual orientation. On the screen, we have a graph of the different responses that people gave. Of those that did respond, the overwhelming majority identified themselves as heterosexual, with 89.37% of the population over 16 identifying as this. With just under 7.5% of the population not answering the question, it leaves just over 3% of the population who identified as having a sexual orientation that was not heterosexual. Breaking this down, just 1.5% of the population identified as either gay or lesbian, with a further 1.28% identifying as bisexual. Other sexual orientations included pansexual at 0.23%, asexual 0.06% and queer as 0.03%. All other sexual orientations were recorded as 0.02% of the population of England and Wales over the age of 16. Breaking this down into numbers, 43.4 million people in England and Wales identified as straight or heterosexual, 748,000 as gay or lesbian, 624,000 as bisexual and 165,000 identified through the category other sexual orientation. But are those figures accurate? When considering there is usually one person in the household who completes the census for all who live there, could this impact on the validity of results? Data from the census also reported on the sexual orientation based upon their different geographical locations. And perhaps unsurprisingly, metropolitan areas reported higher levels of those with an LGB plus orientation, that is those not identifying as straight or heterosexual. London topped the list with 4.3% of the population, whilst the Northeast, Northwest and East of England all reported higher levels of heterosexuality than other areas in the country. However, as already highlighted, sociologists would look to examine the missing 7.5% and why this was not answered. Furthermore, with one person answering the census for the whole family, can we be certain that individuals are able to record the sexual orientation of others accurately? Sexual orientation is often closely guarded by some people, and therefore it may not be known what an individual's true sexual orientation is. A further optional question in the census was gender identity. And once again, this was only asked to respondents over the age of 16. Respondents were asked, is the gender you identify with the same as your sex registered at birth? More people responded to this question than the question on sexual orientation with 94% of respondents replying. However, the missing 6% will be of interest to sociologists who will try to understand why the question was not answered. Of those that did respond, overwhelmingly people answered yes, their gender was the same as that registered at birth. 
In total, 93.5% of the population over the age of 16 answered this way. Just 242,000 people answered no. A further option was available for people to provide more information. Of those, almost half did not provide a write-in response as to how they identified. 48,000 responded as a trans man, while the same number identified as trans female. A further 30,000 identified as non-binary and 18,000 wrote in a different gender identity to those already mentioned. And we can see this summarised in the table on the screen taken from the Office for National Statistics. The overwhelming majority identify as the same gender that they were registered with at birth. However, we need to question why almost 6% of the population did not respond. Again, if one person completes the census for the family, does this impact on the validity of the responses? Furthermore, how might those questioning their gender identity respond to the question? As this is the first measurement on gender identity in the census's history, it will be interesting to compare these results with those found in 2031. Geographically, much like with sexual orientation, those who identified as having a different gender identity were more likely to gravitate towards metropolitan areas, with London having the highest percentage of those answering no to the question with 0.91%, well above the average for England and Wales at 0.5%. London also had the highest percentage of those not answering the question, with almost 8% of people choosing not to. Again, something sociologists would look to understand the reasons behind. The lowest region with negative responses was the southwest, with just 0.42% identifying as having a different gender identity than they were given at birth. That concludes this Tutor to You Sociology topic video looking at the topic summary on sexual orientation and gender identity as part of our series on the Census 2021. Thanks for watching.